Hello everyone, my name is Espic, and today I'm going to show you all a tutorial on how to create custom loop points for SND Stream with Sky Temple. If you don't know by now, SND Stream is an ASM pass that allows you to play any sound file you want in Explorers of Sky. And the way that it does that is it uses WAV files that are packed into the ROM. And a nice function by default is that it automatically loops the songs for you. However, the loops will always be from the start to the end. And for a while, there was no way to actually create custom loop points. Uh, but now with the new and updated version of SD Stream, you can create custom loop points. And that's what I'm gonna be showing today. Now this tutorial will not go into depth about how to actually use SND Stream and how to add it to your ROM. If you want to figure that out, then go watch the tutorial by Stolen Burrito and he explains it in much better detail. This tutorial is going to only cover creating the custom loops. So the things you're going to need, you're going to want Audacity. Now you don't need Audacity, but I just like to use it because I'm very familiar with it and it's how I make all my custom music. You're also going to need Wavasaur. Now, Wavasaur is kind of similar to Audacity, um, but Wavasaur is able to create custom loop points. And the way that we're going to do this is it actually embeds the loop point into the WAV file itself, rather than having to edit like each track in like SD Stream's files. This just does it for you, and it's very simple. And you're also going to need uh, a DS Unpacker, SD Stream, Sky Temple, a legally obtained ROM of Sky, and a song. So let's start with the last point, the song. This is the song I'm going to be using for the tutorial day. It's Silent Chasm from Rescue Team DX. I would say pretty nice song. One of my favorites from the original Rescue Team. So now we need to get that as a file. Now you could just get the, the way for mp3 file from an online converter. Um, you could do that and it would still work, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So here's Audacity and what I like to do is actually record the soundtrack from YouTube or some other game. That way I don't have to worry about downloading from my SUS website. And I'm going to quickly start recording. It should not be able to hear me and it's not. And I'm going to play the song and I'll get back to you once it's all recorded. Alright, so I finished recording the track and I actually had to re record it because uh, there was a random blip that happened in the middle of the playback. Um, so I'm going to. So this, this is the whole track. And the YouTube video is around two and a half minutes. So. There we go. So why did I choose this song in particular? Well, if you don't know, um, Silent Chasm starts with this little intro. I think it's like right here. Like do 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 do. That is only for the intro and only plays once, where the loop actually starts around around there, and I believe the loop point is around after, just around a minute. right there and it doesn't play this intro again okay so you probably was probably obvious but that is why once again I chose this for the example um, so the first things first we have this white space here and um, can zoom in and I'm just gonna get rid of it and an easy way to do it is to just zoom in until you can kind of see where the waveform just stops and then zoom out again and then just drag here back to the start and backspace to just get rid of it. And now the song should start right at the intro instead of having white space. Now this is only an issue if you like recorded it from YouTube, if you like downloaded it from a file, you may still have to do this, um, but you may not have to. Um, but it's especially noticeable if you like record your audio and like start playing or record 
then start playing the audio like a second later. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we want to determine how we want the song to sound in the game. And the first thing we're gonna do is volume. So I'm gonna use Control A to select the whole song. And on Audacity, it is go to effect and amplify. Uh, amplification essentially means how loud it is in decibels. That's what DB means. Um, zero is like the loudest it could be without audio clipping. Audio clipping essentially means that a, a sound is just too loud and you might get static and I don't want that. And I usually like to, the peak amplitude here is like the highest volume it will go to. And the lower this is, the quieter it is. So if we want the maximum to be zero, I would say a good volume to set as a maximum would be negative 1.5. Um, now you make sure you change this value for the maximum, not how much you're actually changing it by. Can you do that? So it's a little bit louder now. And I like to go to negative 1.5 instead of zero because if it's too loud, then the rest of the game sounds might be too quiet. And I don't want that. So now it sounds like this. And these blue bars up here indicate like how um, loud it got. And as you can see zero is right here, then we go down negative six, negative 12. Anything like around negative 60 is like inaudible. Um, so next thing we need to do is we need to change the sample rate. <laughs> um, what the sample rate or project rate as it's called down here is essentially it determines the audio quality and the file size. Um, the higher the sample rate, the better it sounds, and the bigger the file size is. Now, I believe Sky Temple 1.5 uh, made it where if you wanted, if your file size goes over 128 megabytes, then it will automatically change the header for you to make it bigger, but I'm not too sure how that works. But regardless, you always kind of want to conserve on space, especially if you could have multiple uh, as a do stream tracks and these WAV files take up a lot of space in the ROM like it's crazy how much they inflate the ROM by so right now our project rate is 44,100 Hertz and this is normal um, but you can change this to any of these values here you can even change it to whatever you want um, now I would recommend changing it to 32,000 um, for first of all, let's listen to it at 44,100 again. Okay. Uh, now let's listen into it at 32,000. It shouldn't sound that much different. Yeah, I don't notice a difference. Maybe other people do, but I don't. Um, but even by doing that, we have effectively shrunk down the file size by 28% while still conserving around the same audio quality. Now, in Burrito's tutorial, he actually said to lower the sample rate to 22,050, which would cut the file size in half. But this is where I notice a considerable dip in audio quality. And a way that I noticed is through the um, symbols. Let's compare that to 44,100. Yeah, you can barely hear the symbols there. And it's gonna, the sample rate will affect the song differently depending on the song, but as an example, that's what I've noticed here. So yeah, 32,000 is like a good like compromise right in the middle. Now actually, what I'd like to do is something different. And you can highlight this and change it to whatever you want. I like to change it to 32,000 768. Why this number? Uh, because that is, actual, the, that is the actual sample rate that the Nintendo DS uses for audio. And I'm not too sure if this actually means anything, but I believe that having it be the same will probably reduce like static and stuff like that. Because in older versions of SFD Stream, this was forced to be at 44,100 and there was some static. But it could just be that, you know, the pads just got better. So now we want to determine, well, actually the next thing we want to do is change this to mono. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and split stereo to mono. And the reason you need this 
is because SOD stream uses mono rather than stereo. What stereo means is that there's a left channel, which is up here, and a right channel, which is down here, that go into different speakers, or since I'm wearing headphones, the left means the left ear and the right means the right ear. And these um, little bars in the playback level indicate like how loud each channel is. And by you explain it to mono, now they both will play from the same channel. And this is gonna be a little bit louder. Yeah, um, that's because it's playing both at once. Now, how Burrito uh, suggested you should uh, go forward with this is to only use one uh, channel, like one just for the left, so we can hear this left side. Or just the right side. Now, I, now sometimes that can work, but oftentimes I just feel like a lot of songs rely on stereo and having both channels. So what I like to do is just use both. Now, at the moment, this is going to be too loud. If any of the decibel in the playback level goes into the positives, there'll be this red little um, indicator up here. Like that means that the song is too loud and there's going to be audio clipping, which means static. And we don't want that. So I'm going to use control A and then reduce this to um, I would say around negative nine. I sometimes go negative six, but negative nine is a safer. Now, as you can see, that is higher than negative nine, but that's all the, the amplification for the max of volume is only for one of these channels. Now, at the moment, we kind of have two mono tracks, both being played at the same time, and we're only going to want to use one. So, now, the way that I like do that is just by exporting it as a WAV file. So, go down the file, export as WAV. You can also export as MP3 or OTG, but uh, SO2 Stream specifically uses WAV, so that's what we're going to do. And I made this folder specifically for this, and we're going to call this Stream to Zero because that's the uh, format that um, SO2 Stream uses. It's Stream underscore, and then the number starting from zero of what track you want to play. Okay, now let's close Audacity and let's open the file again. All right, so here's the file, let's open it again. Now it's one mono track. So um, now let's actually fix the volume uh, back to what we wanted to before, which is negative 1.5. As you can see, it was, um, what was it? It was at negative 3.3. And that was after I set it to negative nine. So I'm not, too, I'm not too knowledgeable on how um, audio works at decibels, but generally I think around negative six is like 50% volume. So I think negative 1.5, I, like I already said, I already said my reasons for it, but this is a good volume. And let's let, take a listen. So it's still a mono track, but you're going to hear both channels. Um, so now let's actually get to the loop point, which is what all what y'all been waiting for. Um, so what we're going to need to do is find where we want the loop to start and end. Um, I think an easier way to start is with the end. So um, what I like to do is go to here and click on spectrogram. Now you're going to see this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! What is going on here? What is all the what is all these colors? You don't have to worry about them. Um, but um, they are a good indication if you can detect some patterns. Um, so I know the loop starts at around just around a minute 15. So we're going to zoom in around a minute 15. And generally the big like changes in lines often mean like louder noise. These are probably like percussion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's actually sooner than this. So let me find it. Okay, so it's here. This is where the loop starts. Zoom in right here. Now, the reason why I even use the spectrogram at all is because it's easier to determine where the sound starts rather than just the waveform, which you only have this. Now, in this case, it's actually not even that bad, but there are some songs where it's like really busy, and like 
so many sounds are going on at once it's hard to find the loop point the spectrogram is just way more consistent for me now even though the loop starts here i'm actually not going to use this for my loop point and the reason why is because of smoothness there may be some times where the sounds from right before the loop ends kind of mess over or carry over into the looped section. So what I mean by this, if you had your loop where it was just like a cymbal hit, your loop could go like this. And that would sound pretty choppy. But by making the loop point a little bit farther out, we can retain some of the sounds from before the loop point and make that the new loop point and therefore just flows a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And I usually like to go out around a beat or sometimes a full bar or measure away from the loop point. So that would be around here, I think. Yeah, the second um, of that, whatever. So uh, I'm going to zoom in even more. Now it's going to get really blurry here and sometimes I like to zoom out a little bit. Um, now where the colors usually change to like red or sometimes if you the yellow down here is oftentimes we're going to make my loop. I'm going to start right here. This is where the red kind of starts. Um, you can't really tell from here. Um, and to zoom in so from looking at it this way it seems like it's right before this big bar here but if i play it it kind of does sound like it started there so that's going to be the end of the loop so let's take this and drag it all the way to the right here and gone. it's backspace and that gets rid of it so the song will end right there Okay, good. So now I need to find the actual loop point. And the loop starts around the very start of the song. So let's go over to where the song starts. Now the loop starts here. But remember that we wanted to give ourselves some space. So our loop would actually start right here on three seconds. So let's zoom into this and take another look. So we have a very similar pattern to the one we had at the end of the loop, which is good. That's what you want. And remember how I said I kind of wanted it where the red starts right here. That's right around here is where we want the loop point. And we'll zoom out some more. And you can tell that by it kind of, once again, the song kind of sounds like it almost starts from here. So what we want to know now is how does the loop actually sound? Because we don't want to go forward with this until we know how it sounds like. So we're going to, we already marked this place down with our cursor and we're going to drag this over to the end here because that's where the loop is going to end. And to loop it, you, um, you pressed shift and space and that will start a loop of the highlighted section here, which is the loop of what we want. And, and the test the loop, all we gotta do is just listen. Did you see how it kind of looped like there? And the loop actually was pretty smooth. So I would say I did a pretty good job with that. But now how are we gonna note down what our loop point is? Cause if we zoom in on this, uh, oh, it zooms into the middle. So let's go back over here. This is around 2.99 seconds, as it says down here. But we can't actually use that uh, because the way that loop points work is it uses what's called the sample. The sample number is kind of like a frame in a video in some way, except it there are way more samples in a second than frames in a second. And that has to do with the hertz. 
this video that you're watching is 30 hertz, 30 frames per second, while the project rate is 32,000, which is almost 10,000 times more. But we are able to find out what the sample is simply by looking at this. So you can right click here and right now it says hours, minutes, seconds, but you can actually change this to samples right here. There we go. Now I have a set to the start of my selection. As you can see, it's 97,986. And the ending, you don't need to care about because it's gonna be the end of the song. And the song starts at zero samples. So we're gonna to need to write this number down. I'm gonna write it down right here. 97,986. Okay. And I clicked off and that's why it's not highlighted anymore, but it's still, it's still at the same point as it was before. Okay. Now that that's done, let's export it as the wave one more time since we did make changes to it because of the volume and just save it over that. Now we need to open Wavasaur. All right, so here we are in Wavasaur. I mean, it looks kind of similar, but it's a little bit different and we are going to need to import our WAV file. So let's go find it, file open. And here we have streamed zero. Let's go. And it's gonna put it in this window. You can just double click this and it will just attach it to the main window. And we can play it over here. So it's still the same file that we know. Now to add the loop point, you go up here, this L right here, and this is create loop points. So by default, the loop start will be at the very start of the song and the loop end will be at the very end of the song, which is how it usually is. And if you're making, if you don't, and if you want the loop to be at the start, then you don't need wave of sword at all. Um, but remember, you only need, you only need wave of sword if you want to create custom loop points. So let's go to tools up here, then click loop and then properties. Now, the only thing you need to worry about is this right here. On uh, the end, there is two million, whatever. It's the same number as the end of the song as we found in Audacity. It says the start is at zero and you don't want to change the end point because you want the end to be the end of the song. Otherwise you just be wasting space. But the sample number we written down is what we're going to be using here. So written down right here, I'm going to copy and paste that here. 97,186 and click okay. So now it loops around, uh, I don't think it tells me, but that's the sample. And let's um, play the loop right here. And like before, we're, we're just gonna quick test it to make sure it sounds the same and still loops smoothly. All right, works just fine. Now we want to uh, save this and you don't export. The only export option is uh, MP3. Uh, what we wanna do is uh, click save. Now in Audacity, this would save it as an Audacity project, but in Wave of Sword, it saves it as a WAV file. And you don't need to go into menu or anything. It just updates the current WAV file. Now we're done with Wave of Sword and now We've created our looped song. And like I said before, the loop points are now embedded into the file and SND stream is able to see that. So it will start playing from zero and then go to the loop end and then back to the loop start at infinitum. So now I'm going to take this file and put it in SD stream and put it in a ROM and let's see how it sounds in Sky Temple. All right, so now I have 
packed the sound file into the ROM and we're gonna have a quick test. We're gonna go to Drenched Bluff because Beach Cave is boring and change the music and see how it sounds. All right, so here we are in the debugger and because it's Sky Temple Debugger and it's laggy, there's gonna there might be some static and the sound will play a little bit slower. But we're just doing this to make sure that it works, and then we can actually test it on an emulator like Melon. So I'm gonna turn the volume on and let's take a listen. And fun fact, you can uh, hold B to um, make the debugger run faster. All right, so I played a little bit and this is around where the loop ends and let's see if it works. I mean, it should. You hear that? Probably doesn't even sound like there was a loop point at all. And that's exactly what we want. Uh, but of course you can't be too sure about this and we're gonna quick test it on uh, an emulator. So it seems I actually have to play through the game to drench the bluff, oh boy. All right, so here I am on Melon DS and I didn't change this, um, but uh, let's just see how this sounds. First of all, if it fades in. It's a little quieter than I expected, but... Um... Yep, still works. And it's a little bit quieter because I turn my volume down on my emulator but the actually the sound itself is actually quieter than I expected it to be but that could also just be because the sound is quieter in general and you know the volume for each song will be different but regardless the point being it works and that is how you make custom loop points in SD stream so thank you all for watching hope you learned something and as always stay crazy stay cool